and welcome Angelinos. We thank you for tuning in to yet another brilliant episode of the Galaxy Guy podcast, hosted by Chris Maldonado, a show made by Loyal Galaxy fans for Loyal Galaxy fans who bleed blue, white and gold. So join us as we talk about the ins and outs, as well as the ups and downs of your favourite team, the one and only, the Los Angeles Galaxy. Hola y bienvenidos, Angelinos. Welcome back, Galaxy fans, to the Galaxy Guy Show. You guys know the rest. I'm your host, Chris Maldonado. Y como siempre, we are here to talk to you about your favorite club, our favorite club, the LA Galaxy. And hey, it looks like the LA Galaxy is going to keep us employed for longer than next week, right? Because uh, <laughs> as you guys have heard, that is right. The Galaxy is going to the playoffs the first time in the last three years. It's been a while, 2019, the very last time. And then uh, in the last eight years, this makes it second time, which is crazy. It's wild. We're excited. Uh, we're going to obviously talk about that. Uh, it's going to be a very exciting show. Uh, like I said, most of you have heard by now that Galaxy has clinched the playoff spot. They have their ticket with that home draw against Real Salt Lake. We will, of course, be talking about that game this past Saturday night, as well as the playoffs. We have some very good figures to talk about the usual stuff. We're going to be unwrapping the game, breaking down the stats. And, you know, we will always provide provide that unbiased analysis. We'll talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of the game. I've got joining me tonight, the usuals. You guys know these, you guys know these gentlemen, you know who they are, you know what they do. Um, Matt Granger himself. How are you tonight, Matt? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, we're in playoffs. <laughs> which is great. Um, you know, I think we had so many, you know, peaks and valleys throughout this season and it looked like it was just going to get out of our grasp, but you know, Ricky Pooch, someone I've been super high on and I've been very much standing and promoting to the extent that on the discord for people who are on the discord, I said on uh, nine, five, 22, that playoffs are a lock much to the chagrin of a a lot less positive people, yeah. but I said playoffs are a lock, and here we are. Master Domus strikes again. We're in the playoffs. <laughs> I have to. I have to say this. Matt called this like as soon as Puig was signed. Matt called it. This is a lockdown for the LA Galaxy. They're making the playoffs. Some of us more negative folks were like, "Yeah, you know what? The Galaxy is very inconsistent." Blah blah blah. We had a whole show about it where we're pretty much on film saying the Galaxy is not making the playoffs this year. So, <laughs> hey, but you know what? We're not scared to admit when we're wrong. So we were wrong, thankfully. Uh, one of those gentlemen who was with me on that wrong train, of course, is with us tonight as well. Uh, you guys know him. You know who. You know what he does. The man with the stats. Casey Cagle. Casey, how are you tonight, dude? Good. I, I mean, all that math I did for nothing, right? I guess, you know, those projections <laughs> definitely didn't come to fruition. Um, but feeling good to be back in the playoffs. You know, it's it's a little bit of uh, unfamiliar territory as of late. Um, but, I mean, like Matt said, there's been a resurgence in this squad with the addition of Pooj. And uh, I'm excited to see what Magic October brings. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's – the magic of Ricky Pooch can't be, <laughs> can't be understated. We're going to talk about that young man. Of course, we have to talk about him. We can't have a show now without talking about him. But uh, it's good having you guys on the show. Uh, always great having you guys on. Your insight is wonderful. Um, before we kick it off, you guys know what we do. Uh, just a quick word to the fans. The Galaxy had fan appreciation this last Saturday. Uh, here at the show, guess what? We also appreciate the fans. Uh, it's been a phenomenal year. I got to meet so many of you at the stadium this year. Just Sunday, uh, Saturday night, got to meet a lot of you guys. Shout out to the people that came up to the 134 section to say hello. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, for, for those of you that are watching us, perhaps for the first time, the subscribe button is down there. Uh, you can give us a subscribe. We won't spam your inbox. Uh, we put out one video a week sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we will not be spamming your inbox. Uh, so thank you guys. And we, we appreciate you guys and we will continue to appreciate you guys next season. With that said, um, let's start this off. Let's, let's talk a little bit about um, what the galaxy was going in into this past Saturday before this 
Saturday's game against Salt Lake. The Galaxy had two back-to-back wins. Uh, of course, we had that home win against Colorado, which was a pretty convincing win by the Galaxy. Great performance. And then the Galaxy traveled up to San Jose for that Cali Classico. Always a tough game. Always a tough, uh, a tough matchup. I myself was wrong on that because I had called that a loss for the Galaxy. Uh, the Galaxy proved me wrong. Pleasant, pleasantly, uh, always awesome when the Galaxy proves me wrong. They went up there and they beat San Jose 3-2. to two. They left themselves in a really good spot. Coming into this game, they needed just one point, a draw, which they got, in order to qualify for the playoffs. Now, let me ask you guys just real quick before we get on, we get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. Did you guys think the Galaxy was going to get this point tonight or did uh, on Saturday night? Or did it feel a little like, this is a little too good to be true. The Galaxy might might squander this chance. Uh, how are you guys feeling about this game going into Saturday? Well, I mean, I was feeling good. You were at the tailgate, Chris, where, where a couple of other podcast uh, fans came up to us, which was really, really cool. Um, and I had us winning 3-1. I was super optimistic. It might have been the fourth bottle of wine, but I felt like we were going to dominate. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for it. Um, no, I thought we were going to do really well. I think the momentum's on our side. And then, you know, I, I want to say I'm like, in like the last 10 games or something, we've only lost once. We've only lost once with Ricky Poosh yeah. on the team. And, and I mean, until he gives me a reason to believe that he's not, you know, everything I believe him to be, I'm going to continue to believe we're not going to lose with him. So, no, I thought we were going to win. I thought for sure at minimum we get that point. Yeah. Casey, yeah, I think, feel, man? I think going into this game, you know, it was, it was definitely a bit of cautious optimism. You know, we like Matt said, we did have the momentum going into this game against Real Salt Lake coming off the back of those two wins. And those two wins were in games that I expected to be trap games against, you know, low-performing Western Conference teams. So uh, it was a little bit um, of, yeah, ca- cautious optimism for me yesterday. But um, I'm glad we were able to eke out the point and, and lock ourselves in playoffs. Yeah. We're in the playoffs, and um, <laughs> speaking of speaking of being locked down, it sounds like we're locked down for another season with Javier Chicharito Hernandez as a designated player, huh? Um, yeah, for those people who don't know, uh, Chris uh, broke worldwide <laughs> news this past week on accident. On that, all he, completely on accident. All he, all he did was go on Instagram and say, hey, love him or hate him. You know, this might be Chicharito's last game as a show of support to get people to go to the last game, right? And then Teacher Rito Hernandez saw Chris's post, most likely saw that we're the most followed uh, Instagram podcast and YouTube follow- podcast. He's like, you know what? Let me set the record straight. I'm back <laughs> next year, <laughs> which set off a firestorm. We were covered yeah. by Spanish newspapers, uh, English newspapers, yeah. Mexican newspapers. And then, you know, the Galaxy Media, the we're insiders, like, oh, yeah. we should and, yeah, ask the that insiders, Mr. Mr. Come Lately, we, we should ask him, are you back next year? And he's like, so then they do, and then Chicho's like, yeah, of course. Why don't you guys ask earlier? <laughs> I thought you guys already knew this. <laughs> that's the standard of our media, y'all. <laughs> that's what we do but here. Yeah. We get right to the source. <laughs> yep, Chris, Chris is breaking news, just like he always did on Reddit. <laughs> just, you guys just troll yourself to the top, dude. That's... Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that was great. Um, but yeah, we were – my t- my tweet – and his retweet um, was featured on uh, the, the Daily Mail, which I guess is like a big newspaper in the UK, big publication and uh, some some Mexican newspaper. So um, there it is, Chicharito, Chicharito, unofficially announced on a retweet of mine that he was coming back to the Galaxy. So and then the next day it was officially announced by the LA Times. So um, we were there, man. It happened. It happened and I have the proof. <laughs> You know, the best part was, you know the best part was was when Kevin Baxter for the LA Times was like, I'm being told that Chicharito is coming back next year. It's like, oh, you're being told by Chicharito that he's coming back next year. It's like, okay, thanks for that. I'm being told by checking Twitter that <laughs> I'd, I'd oh, say man. we're official enough now, you know? Yeah. What a blue, blue check boxes for everybody. Blue check marks, man. Make it official. <laughs> Oh, but that's good, man. Look, let's do it. Without further ado, let's get to the meat of the sandwich. Let's chomp that sandwich down. Uh, Matt, Casey, what do you guys say we talk about this match uh, on Saturday? Galaxy versus yes. Salt Lake. Yes, let's do it. Of Absolutely. Great, let's do it. We're going to be diving deeper into the, the section of the show 
that we like to call the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, of course, you guys know we have to start off with the good. I'll ask you guys openly, who wants to start off with the good? Matt, Casey? Yeah, I'll jump I'll on this one. Oh, go ahead, Casey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Casey, you take the lead on this, dude. Let us know. Damn Zoom good? delay. Um, no, I mean, the good, we've, we've already touched on it here. I mean, we're back in the playoffs after a, a three-year hiatus. Um, you know, obviously, again, I use the term cautious optimism uh, very liberally with this team, especially in the, you know, the, the postseason. Um, you know, there's still a lot of seeding to be determined in the top half of the Western Conference. So that'll determine whether or not we get a home playoff game or if we are uh, away. Um, and then, you know, just talking about a couple of individual performances last night, um, starting with Bond. Had a great night, five shots on target against him, stopped four of those chances, one of which came in the dying moments of the game uh, and basically saved the point for us. Um, it was, you know, right on the line, and, and Bond was there to uh, to make the save. Also, save our center save. backs last night, um, Caceres, I mean, he's much more effective as a center back. We've seen it in the last two or three games. Um, he also had 100% passing accuracy last night, Wow, 82 completed passes out of 82 attempted which is surreal no kidding dude <laughs> wow um cool bali was also really solid he had a 96 percent passing rating um, he utilized his cheeky skill to get himself and the back line out of some pretty dangerous situations where rsl was really laying on the pressure yeah um thick um also wanted to give a shout out to costa i think costa had a great game last night um he obviously converted the pk in the 68th minute he had an 87% pass rating in the final third. Um, and he really fulfilled his role on the right. You know, he was finding areas to be effective on and off the ball. I um, mean, he combined well with Araujo, Delgado, and Brugman. Um, so I think, you know, he, he proved his worth last night. Um, you know, there's been a, a little bit of a, uh, a rocky road to get to this point, to say the least, with Douglas Costa. Uh, but I think he's kind of starting to find his his rhythm a little bit with this team he uh he also he came back to life after that penalty kick like for i don't know i just saw him hustling more you know um which was refreshing to see i don't know it like sparked him or something <laughs> uh and speaking of of standings right now as we are recording in nashville nashville against houston in the 80th minute Nashville is down 2-0. You can see it here. Casey brought it up on the screen. As it stands right now in the 80th minute, Nashville losing to Houston 2-0. Now, you'll remember that Nashville, as you see there, is tied with the Galaxy at 47 points, which means this gives us the upper hand going into next week. All we have to do is beat Houston and Matt. You have a little bit more insight on this and where the galaxy stands. You were talking to me about these playoff scenarios before the show. What can we expect as it stands right now with this result for the LA Galaxy? Okay, so my good is going to be playoffs. And for that, I'm going to walk us through the playoff scenarios here. Yeah. Okay, so assuming that Nashville loses this game, and they're down 0-2 in the 80th minute, but just for recording purposes, unless it changes in the next 10 minutes, we'll, we'll go with this. Um, Okay, so we can jump to third if Dallas loses their next game and the Galaxy win their next game. Uh, we will be even on points, but as people know, the first tiebreaker is wins, and the second tiebreaker is goal differential, so then we could jump to third. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is that the bottom half, worst-case scenario and results, could be possibly seventh place. So if we go into next week and we lose, which would be a worst case scenario and Nashville draws Portland beats RSL and Minnesota uh, wins their game, then we could see ourselves dropping all the way to seventh place. That would wow. give Nashville 48. That would give Portland 49 and that would give Minnesota 48, which would put them one above us and we would drop all the way to seventh place. <laughs> so the good news in all this is that we cannot fall out of playoffs at this point, but, uh, the bad news is that we're looking at somewhere between third place as a very optimistic uh, scenario, or we're looking at possibly seventh place if we lose. Wow. Um, in, in all reality, 
if we win, we're taking a home playoff game. It's that simple. And if we lose, I mean, it's a very slippery slope going downward. Uh, Nashville has to play LAFC. It's a tough game, but LAFC's already got the supporter shield. They're not moving from there. You're talking about maybe resting older guys like Bale and Vela. Um, Portland has to play RSL, who's playing for their life. But Portland is also in a bit of a precarious position. And then I want to say Minnesota's playing... Yeah, Minnesota's playing Vancouver. So Ooh. also precarious position. Everyone in the standings has to win. Um, if you're looking at the MLS in general, uh, there are a couple of clinching scenarios here. And I'll just detract from the Galaxy just for a second. Sure. So the Port- Portland can, can clinch with a win or draw against RSL. A loss straight up eliminates Portland. RSL can clinch if they beat Portland. Any other result for RSL, so a draw or a loss, will eliminate RSL. Minnesota has to win or draw versus Vancouver, a loss would eliminate Minnesota. And it, as hard as it is to believe, Vancouver, who spent the majority of the season in like the last two places in, in the Western Conference, all they have to do is beat Minnesota and they'll jump. Are they and still alive? And, no, they'll jump and they'll out tie break Portland on wins. Everyone has a tiebreaker on <laughs> wow. Everyone has a tiebreaker on Portland. Portland's arguably in the most precarious spot in the entire wow. Western Conference right now. Wow. As odd as that is. Ben, um Vancouver's so I, still alive for a playoff spot that's crazy. exactly so in all honesty like I would love to tell you where to buy your tickets for <laughs> most likely <laughs> but it, it can it could be anywhere guys. it could be anywhere uh, in the country at this point <laughs> so as as it is with anyone who knows who's ever competed or ever played sports yeah. the simple solution solution is always to win so we have to win next week we will <laughs> and that's and <laughs> And that's your Galaxy Guy playoff breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to win. We have to win, and we have to depend on some results. But like Matt said, just win, baby. Plain, plain and simple. Galaxy wins, and some results go our way. Third place is still an option. That is wild. That is nuts to go up to third place on decision day. Worst case scenario, seventh place, which would suck. But uh, <laughs> we have to stay optimistic. Nashville losing right now is big for us. Good. Continue to suck, Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, moving forward with, with my good, right? And we've talked about this a little bit. Actually, we've talked about this a lot. And we just cannot, cannot be understated, overstated. Ricky Puig, like he is absolutely everywhere. He is such a smart team player. Like he doesn't only just read the play that's happening, the play that he's involved in, in his immediate vicinity. He's he's looking at where the play is going to be, right? Where it's going in general. And, and he's aware of other places on the pitch. He seriously leaves very little space open in the midfield. And you guys will notice this. And what I mean by that is he fills all of those empty spots in the midfield by making himself available for for just about every play and every pass. I mean, he's filling those gaps. He's everywhere, m- making himself an option for passing, moving in and out as needed, uh, passing the ball, moving into another spot to make himself available there. You know, he's just incessantly searching for plays. He he um, he he wants the plays to come through him. And you'll notice, pay attention to this, pay attention to this. If you've seen any of the games, if you're going to see any of the games coming forward, the passing behavior of other players around him in the LA Galaxy, right? They look specifically for Puig. Even if they have another person that might be an easier pass to make too, they look for Puig and they try to get the the ball to him. They want the, the plays to come through him, right? And that's very reassuring for your team to see that. They know who to go through and they know that the ball is, is better off going through Puig, right? So, um, it's something that I've noticed that players specifically look for him to get the ball rolling, you know, and, and they feel confident enough to do that, that he will make something with that ball, with that pass, with that play, and he'll move it forward. So um, I don't have to say it. He's great with distribution. He's great with the passing. Uh, uh, one of you guys uh, last week or the week before that talked about uh, the, the passing accuracy for Puig. I think it was either, Casey, was that you? You talked about it, it was someone, uh, I think somewhere so, in the yeah. 90 percentile, right? Right, and hasn't dropped since. Hasn't really Jones. dropped since. It's just like he can pass the ball really, really well, you know, and, and, and he's just available. He can take those turns. 
you know, even if he has a guy on him, he just turns on him and he goes, you know, this is something that I've been dying to see from a Galaxy midfielder. It really frustrated me to see Jonah and Legette getting the ball, turning back, facing our net and passing the ball backwards. You know, you see Puig and Gaston does this as well. Gaston looks for an outlet, right? But Puig, even if he can't find an immediate pass, he'll turn and he'll go forward and he'll create something, you know? So that's my good. Ricky Puig, man. I just can't get enough of that kid. It's it's awesome to see him play in a Galaxy jersey. He plays with so much passion. Um, constantly getting beat on. Constantly getting beat on. He's such a small guy, small stature, like very thin. But man, can he take some punishment? That kid is a brawler. So I love him. I know a lot of you guys are falling in love with him. So can't get enough of him. That's my good for the week, guys, for this game. Is there anything else to add? Anything we might have missed? No, I, I think you're 100 percent right. I think you look at when you know Ricky Pouch came into the game to the to the Galaxy, and he's completely changed the, the trajectory of the team. You know, prior to him coming, we were talking about how the team was in a death spiral coming out of summer. And then he comes on the team and, you know, there's like three or four results that are, you know, net gains just from his direct actions. Um, and then, like you said, about checking in and, and moving the ball and turning your shoulder, you know, there's so many things he does, right? It's hard to encapsulate them all. Um, and you can tell that like, so the Galaxy before Ricky Pouj was a team that liked to teacup a lot, right? So just rotate the ball around the back. Um, and that's born out of a lack of ambition, a lack of courage, and then a lack of creativity. But then now you look at the Galaxy now, and they don't do that nearly as often as they used to. The game's always going forward now. And yeah. it's going forward in a controlled manner. Um, you know, there's, like you said, there's just not enough you can say about a person who can come into a team full of veterans, you know, who are used to the league, who have played their years over Europe and then back in MLS as well, and just change the dynamics so quickly. Um, just really a direct net, net positive. And, you know, if you... <laughs> You, you can just watch him and just enjoy the game. He's just that great. And he's a phenomenal player. He's one of those people who, like, you know, there are these these guys out there, and whether it's basketball or, like, soccer, for example, who, like, they just move the chess pieces, right? They pull the strings, and the way they move and the way they manipulate the ball moves the entire defense, and they create for other people, and other people get better because of it. He's just one of those guys. So it's it's yeah. it's really nice to see him play. Hopefully you get to see him play a little bit longer. But I, I would imagine that offers are going to be coming in this offseason for him. Oh, it's just absolutely. whether the Galaxy Easily. want to hold on to him or not. Absolutely. Yeah. 23. 23 years old. What do you think, Casey? Sticks around longer than that? I mean, you know, if the, the check is right, um, you know, the there's there's a lot of roster movement that would need to happen to, you know, open up some DP space to accommodate, you know, a, a salary that would uh, convince him to stay. Um, but uh, – who knows? I mean, who knows what the FO can can work out? Um, but I mean, I, I certainly hope we'll see more Pooj next season. Some sort of uh, incentive clause, maybe performance incentive. You know, if he plays um, 10 percent of the games, <laughs> <laughs> 10 percent of available minutes and scores one goal, he, uh, he automatically get gets a DP contract, <laughs> a five year contract extension. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy to me that Chicharito was given that, but Costa's contract did not include some sort of performance, uh, some sort of performance clause, right? It was just like a six month loan. Eh, you know what? We'll just keep you an extra 18 months. <laughs> there was nothing there of, you know, you got to score at least five goals and, and start at least 50% of the games. It's so crazy. It, it's nuts. <laughs> I'll let other people talk about that. <laughs> uh all right so anyway guys okay so we covered the good we have to move on to the bad right the bad stuff in this game um I don't know, look i'll start us off here right i, I have to say this guys because you know i was ranting about this earlier with you guys on uh on our on our private chat but um the galaxy offense struggled big time during this game right and and i, I know it's it's playoff we we made the playoffs we tied um, it's troubling. It is deeply troubling to me. Uh, we still can't seem to be able to break down these teams that hunker down defensively. It's, it's, it's honestly been our Achilles heel all season long for several seasons, but like, it's been more obvious this season. And, you know, I mean, come on, we're, we're playing at home 
with all of our starters, most of our starters are on the field. This is our A team in front of a sold out crowd against the team that has won four of their last 20 MLS matches, right? Um, we got shiny bracelets, right? This is, uh, this is all you need the recipe for a, a, a great performance offensively by the LA Galaxy. Sold out crowd, right? Um, but our offense seems so flaccid. It seems so flaccid. It was average at best, you know. Uh, thankfully, Chicharito ended up getting, ended up earning that penalty, you know, instead of earning himself a second yellow card. Um, but on that note, something I really think we need to talk about, the LA Galaxy and penalty kicks, right? But don't worry, I'm not going to talk about how abysmal our penalty conversion has been this season because we've already talked about that. You guys have heard about that. Uh, and I will not mention Panenka's, right? I'll, I'll refrain from that. But here's what I want to talk about. And I was talking to Matt and Casey about this in our chat a little bit before this, before the, the show, right? The LA Galaxy had a total of three penalty kicks, penalty goals awarded, right? In the first 25 games of the season, three. But in the past 10 games alone, the Galaxy has been awarded seven penalties, two of which were misses. So again, I'll say this. I'll repeat it again. In the first 25 games of the season, the LA Galaxy was awarded just three PK kicks. In the last 10 matches alone of this season, the Galaxy has earned seven penalty kicks. And of those four penalties, four of those scored led directly to the LA Galaxy salvaging a point in four different games. That's right. That, that means that in four games, four of the last 10, the Galaxy has salvaged one point, at least one point, via penalty kick. That was the 90th minute goal by Dejon against Seattle back in August, which salvaged the point for the Galaxy. The 88th minute PK goal by Chicharito against SKC, which salvaged the point. And yes, that was also the same game where Chicha missed the second penalty kick, which you know, was, we'll, we'll always remember that one. There was the 99th minute PK goal um, by Ricky Puig in Nashville, which salvaged the point. That was that 1-1 draw against uh, uh, Nashville. And of course, the PK this past weekend, Saturday, 60th minute PK that uh, Casey talked about. Douglas Costa, which also salvaged the point against RSL. Now, if you remove those four salvaged points from those via PKs for the LA Galaxy, the Galaxy would currently be sitting at 43 points, leaving us in ninth place in the Western Conference and practically eliminated from playoff contention. So I know I just offloaded a lot on, on the listeners. I'll float it a lot on you guys right now. What I'm trying to get across here is that the LA Galaxy has been actively, at least to me, it's what it seems like, and the stats would point to that, the, the Galaxy has been actively trying to seek penalty kicks in the last 10 games of the season. And, I mean, you guys might have already noticed, right? Especially guys like Chicharito are out there seeking these penalties. They're seeking contact from, from defenders. And Chicharito even got a yellow for simulating, you know, on Saturday because he was trying to get a PK. Um, I don't know, guys. I, I want to talk to you guys about this, and I want to hear some audience feedback from this. Is it just me? The stats back this up, or, or, or is the Galaxy actively seeking penalties more than they have before? And for some reason, this doesn't sit well with me because I want the Galaxy to be scoring goals from the run of play. I don't want them to have to be resorting to seeking penalties in order to gain an advantage on the opponent. I don't know. How do you guys feel about this? I mean, it certainly seemed so last night. I mean, Chicharito seemed to be wanting to draw penalties. And for, quite frankly, we should have had three penalty opportunities. I don't think that yellow card was warranted at all by Kevin Stott. Um, but with that said, um, you know, that's that's a lot to rely on, especially going into the, the postseason. And like you said, Chris, we'd be without four points in the standings right now, which would sink us down to ninth. Um, and, you know, there there is a little bit of theatrics by Chicharito in the box. Um, he does – have a way of riling up defenders. He likes to go low in aerial challenges sometimes, which 
is actually pretty frowned upon um, <laughs> by, you know, most people in the league. Um, and so that, that will lead defenders to be a lot more scrappy with him in, in the box. And, um, you know, he, he knows how to, to get the best of people sometimes. And I think, you know, he has, he has a knack for drawing penalties. Um, and I think, like you said, we've been seeing that a lot in the last 10 games and uh, it really showed its itself last night, um, you know, with, with the drawn penalties and the penalty that should have been. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, I think just going along with Chris's point, you know, um, the, the fact that so much of our offense has now become reliant on penalties, it's really, it's a symptom, right? It's a symptom of our offense's inability to be creative, our coaching staff's inability to create ideas and create tactics that allow our players to be in positions where they can succeed. Um, you know, I, and as the, and as the season has gone along, teams start to figure each other out. And I think we're seeing in the last third of the season that teams have in general figured out the way the galaxy can play and the galaxy are now relying on penalties and, and there's nothing wrong with being good at drawing penalties. Like that's in the self, its own skill set. But it's its own skill set in the same way that like hitting a trick shot is its own skill set, right? Like you don't go out and play a full basketball game or a full soccer game or a full a football game and rely on your trick shot the entire time. That's no way to be successful. And I think inevitably, when as the Galaxy approach playoffs, playoffs are, are refereed differently. I know we like to pretend like it's not and like a foul in the middle of the field should be the same as it is in the box, but that's not true. That's not pragmatic and that's not the real world. So as we go along, um, I think we're going to see that the, the Galaxy, if they decide to rely on penalties, are going to find themselves, you know, a little vacant in the in the score sheet. Um, so we're going to inevitably have to come up with better ideas, and, and we're going to have to come up with something. Um, whether that whether we have the personnel to do that or whether it's too late, we'll have to see. But penalties is not going to get us all the way to MLS Cup. It's just not. And it was it's a great stat to look up, Chris, because I think if you just look at it on paper. I mean, these are the kind of deeper dives that really show the cracks in the galaxy. And this is what we try to do on the show. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know. It, it just, it, it, I've, I've been seeing it more, more often, you know, that, um, and this, the seven penalties speaks for themselves. Right. And, and unfortunately two of those were missed. Uh, Puig missing one last night was painful. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't want to see that from the galaxy. Like I said, I want to see, them actually create and score goals from the run of play even if it's on set pieces you know whatever it is i want to see that from the galaxy that's what i want to see um but yeah i don't know guys i want to hear other bad takes from this game on saturday i know there were plenty <laughs> well to that oh, go ahead now i'm going for it now i'm going for this time casey <laughs> Good looking people only get to go first so many times. Um, <laughs> so I guess my bad was just like a little bit of the lethargic play from the LA Galaxy. They came out super flat. Um, you know, even though they over possessed the ball, I think in the first 30 minutes, they had something like 70% possession. The team just looked really disorientated. Um, the, the wing backs were not really involved. The midfield uh, was a bit vacant. Brugman was hitting a lot of bad passes. Delgado was a, was a ghost and, and Ricky was overcompensating. Um, and the thing is like you got to get up for that type of game you know it was a straight sellout the box office was a straight sellout they had nothing but promos it was fan appreciation day and you had to know that if you won this game you were basically punching your ticket to a home playoff game if, if you can't get up for a game like this you have to wonder like when the stakes are even higher than this are the galaxy going to be able to step up and get it done yeah. um, and just, they just didn't have that urgency to them so my ugly would just be like the, the general mentality of the team um, I'm hoping that, you know, Greg addresses it and fixes it. I know I don't view him as a good man manager, but I'm hoping that he turns it around here and that we don't lay an egg in Houston just because we have a guaranteed playoff spot. Um, they just need to get more into it. Simple as that. Yeah. I agree. Flash it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, to the point you made earlier, Chris, you know, not being able to create good opportunities from open play you saw last night there was a lot of slow transition into the attack um, and you know most of the transitions through the midfield or long balls played from the galaxy's half were slowed down from you know by a myriad of reasons one being the lack of numbers moving forward 
um, you know, it was very conservative Vanny ball to a degree because, you know, there were very little attempts to play line breaking passes or advance the ball forward. We saw a lot of, like Matt said, teacupping where we, you know, played back to the back line to try and build a new focal point of the attack. And it's not like the position was bad either. We were moving the ball really well. There were good passing combinations, especially through the midfield. But to RSL's credit, they were effective in crowding the space to, to limit the Galaxy's options. And that's that's what really stopped us up. Um, you know, it's, it's being able to make the quick switch or long ball across the field, you know, to, to find the space and, and really exploit, you know, where the, uh, the opposing team is, is crowding. Um, and the Galaxy just didn't do that. Um, and then also last night, you know, the amount of opportunities we had against us um, was a little alarming. You know, we allowed 11 shots, five on target. We conceded three corners in the first three minutes of the game. <laughs> yeah, that was nuts, man. <laughs> yeah, um, nuts. <laughs> obviously, there was Cordova's uh, header in the 26th minute where, you know, I don't know if it was Sega just having a lapse in judgment or if he was just bodied off the ball by Cordova, but, it, you know, it was it was alarming. Um, you know, there were four scoring opportunities in the last 20 minutes alone for Real Salt Lake. And that just kind of goes along with the theme that we've been talking about all season with the Galaxy being a- unable to close out games in the last 20 minutes and how things usually break down in that in that period of the game. Um, RSL missed two big chances, but this game could have easily been 3-1 in RSL's favor. Um, Bond and, came up big. You know, going into the, the postseason here, um, you know, there, there's a little bit to address to, 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 you know, be able to restore faith in our ability to, to win games cleanly through, you know, open play and not just rely on penalty kicks like we were talking about. Yeah. And um, I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the defense, uh, Casey, because that segues into the ugly. And, uh, <laughs> uh, for me, for me, the ugly is just that. It's, it's the defense. And we've talked about the defense to death on this show all season long. I mean, the defense for the Galaxy has been bad for like eight years. All right, let's, let's be honest. It's like six or seven years where the Galaxy defense has been pretty bad. Um, but it, it's still leaky. It's still shaky. There's, there's an improvement there, but not much. <laughs> you know, uh, that play uh, for the, led to the RSL goal. Severino, you know, we were talking about this before we hit record. Severino down the middle, you know, he just kind of cut across the entire midfield and had all that space and, and, and um, laid off the ball to Herrera. You know, Herrera found himself with some space too, hardly challenged, sent that ball across uh, through Cassidus, uh right over Sega, who got bodied, you know, just was, really wasn't <laughs> ready for that, for that challenge. And uh, he wasn't properly marking his man. And I think it was Sergio Cordova, right? The guy who mm-hmm. scored the goal, big guy. Uh, put the ball in the back of the net, you know? It just it just kind of just, it, it seemed too easy for them. It seemed too easy for them. And and this this team is seriously uh, at the tail end of the season, you know? And, and they're still breaking down defensively. They're still allowing easy goals. They're still making some really dumb mistakes that we've seen lead to uh, PKs that have been awarded or goals that have been allowed that are just too easy, amateur mistakes, you know, uh, allowing other teams to score on us. We saw this last weekend against San Jose. You know, we, we talked about this. Had that game been five minutes longer, I'm pretty sure San Jose might have scored a third goal. It would know? have been, yeah, 3-3. Three, three, it would have been 3-3 three, three easily. They gave up that PK and then they scored on us, you know, and, and, and I don't know. I just have no confidence in this team closing down games. And listen... This is the playoffs that are coming up, right? Uh, these are the, the, the quote unquote, the best teams in each conference going up. You know, this is the margin for error here is non-existent anymore. You know, if we don't get that, that first buy, that first game is, is a, is a, is a winner done, right? It's, it's you either win or you're done. You know, there is no tying and there is no losing. So you can't have this where you're up two zero or up two one and at tail end of a playoff game you allow a goal you know um that's gonna force it's gonna force all sorts of badness on you you don't want that we can't continue to be doing that so here we are in the playoffs still allowing these easy goals that to me is the ugly and something that i definitely don't want to see the galaxy 
fall victim to in the playoffs. I don't want to see us lose because our defense just pooped the bed. <laughs> so that, that to me is the ugly. Anything else you guys would like to add on that the ugly side? Yeah, I think, well, my ugly were basically all of the missed chances from the Galaxy last night. Um, a lot of attacking impotency. Um, Puj obviously missed the penalty in the 17th minute, which came back to bite us 10 minutes later, um, going down 1-0 in the 26th minute. And there was a shot off the crossbar in the 75th, um, which just rattled the woodwork. Um, I thought it went bar down behind the line, but apparently not. Um, also, Cabral, who came on in the 79th minute for Grands here. <laughs> who? I mean, <laughs> there's a guy named Cabral on our team. <laughs> I always use the uh, the gif of Kevin McAllister's mom from Home Alone, where she goes, Kevin, on the plane, <laughs> whenever this guy misses an opportunity, because it's just, you know, it's it's a tale yeah. as old as time. He collapses under pressure when he's in possession. Yeah. You know, he had a blocked attempt in the 85th minute when going one-on-one with a defender. He had another blocked attempt in the 87th minute. Um, and he had a breakaway in the last minute of the game where he was chased down and dispossessed by two players who he tried to cut inside um, and just play the ball right into their feet. Um, so, you know, it's these missed chances and, you know, uh, this attacking impotency that is going to need to be addressed, especially going into – the postseason here yeah no i agree some some a lot still left to be answered the la galaxy and and by the way just real quick before we continue on to matt's ugly take it's official nashville lost uh one to two Ooh. they scored one goal in the 90th <laughs> minute so houston just smacked down nashville uh which means that's a great opportunity for the galaxy we are still in fourth place right now just breaking as you're watching this right now um and that means we have we have some breathing room we just all we have to do is win and uh (laughs) we have to smack down houston because you know they've been a thorn in our side for a very long time so uh well with that said matt all we have to do is win oh that sounds super super familiar (laughs) yeah and casey i think dispossessed on that last uh breakaway is it's a bit generous. I'm not sure he ever possessed the ball. I'm pretty sure he just like outright outran the ball and then like left it behind. Um, I mean, you know, it's bad when Doyle is out here, like just beasting you on Twitter. No, oh, yeah. Um, God bless that kid, man. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure someone out there likes him. Um, I'm sure there's a performance incentive somewhere. There. I'm sure there's a poor performance incentive out there somewhere. <laughs> um, no, so uh, I guess my ugly. I have two. Uh, just very quick ones. Uh, one, uh, I guess, is going to be the smoke bomb again. Um, like that, it's just so dumb. It's, <laughs> it's so just, dumb, dude. It's so dumb. It's so embarrassing. It's so poorly timed. Like I just, I just like, okay, you already cloud the field once, and I get it. I heard all like the like you know the the politicking around like, oh, well, that wasn't ex- essentially authorized, and we weren't all in agreement on it, and blah blah blah. Okay, so I get it. It's a big group. But then, dude, like the second time, and then not only did you do it again and crowd the field, but you did it with the goalie on your side. Like all you did was obstruct your own goalie from seeing the field. It's just wild, man. Um, (laughs) Bond out there coughing his lungs out. And I and I and I get it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I've I've been overseas. I've done Champions League games. I've seen La Liga. I've seen Serie A. I've seen League One games. You know, I've I've been up there. I get it. You know, I've, I've marched with the supporter groups before. I've seen the smoke. I've seen the flares, but like you're just really bad at it. So like I don't know. Like in the off season, just like practice because it's not working, man. Um, I was only cool when it doesn't affect what's going on on the field. <laughs> exactly. You know what um, else is also cool when the uh, when the free promotional light up bracelets aren't flying through the air. <laughs> yeah. Scott's head. <laughs> There's an ugly point for you. Yeah, the people throwing their light up wristbands on the field last night that was so, appalling please don't, that don't was do that guys. so dumb yeah. just like one embarrassment after another um okay so now that that's out of the way i guess the second <laughs> one uh i guess would just be um like just like vanny bring in sasha kleshkin and i don't really have anything bad to say about sasha himself the person um i i think this falls more on vanny but you know sasha comes in and immediately they uh, rs almost scored three times on us 
like one time, like literally like within the first, like, I want to say 20, 25 seconds, they almost scored on us. Um, he's just not playable. And I don't, I don't know what Greg's thing about it is, but it doesn't matter how little time you play him when Sasha comes in, like, a, like they're going to score on us. Yeah. And we just got lucky that RSL like skied one and like, and just completely whiffed another header. Um, otherwise we, we most likely would have lost that game. Um, you know, I think Sasha's just at the point of his career where he either needs to be wearing a polo or he needs to be subbed in only if it's like coming down to penalties in the playoff game, but he doesn't, he's got no business being on the field anymore. Um, that would be, I guess that would be my ugly take. It's like I said, if you had followed Sasha's career, he was a beautiful player, amazing, amazing, amazing MSL play, MSL player. Um, you know, I think he's like the record holder and assist. He's just one short of a hundred, but yeah. Look, man, father time comes for all of us. If it came for Pelé, it's going to come for Sasha, and, and it's just it's over for him. So I think that's my ugly take is, is smoke and Sasha. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, the there, ice, man. there was a time where Sasha question was an absolute Swiss Army knife for any team he played for, whether it was Anderlecht, Orlando, the Red Bulls, New York. Yeah. But that time has long gone. Um, yeah. He just doesn't have the pace anymore. He doesn't have the control. He gets bodied too easily um it's you know it's time to put him out to pasture as they say and like you said matt i mean if he wants to take up a technical position with the galaxy fine i'm all for it um he's already you know been coaching i think the u13s um and you know seeing him in that regard would would definitely be um you know a better place for him (laughs) on this team moving forward (laughs) yeah no man I, i i we've talked about this on the show before I think we have, or maybe the Discord about all the goals that have been directly attributed to uh, Sasha coming on, and then like where we get scored on almost immediately right after, just because you can't you can't keep up. So uh, that's unfortunate. Really nice guy, great person, but just the legs aren't there anymore, you know. But uh, I think that's it, right, guys? We covered everything. Do you guys anything else on the on the ugly side? No, I think that's it. No, I, I, in general, I'm in a very good mood. We're in playoffs. This is, this is going to be a really fun time. You know, I think no matter how you look at it, um, no matter how, whether you're people, those, those people who want to stick your head in the sand and just be negative all the time, or you're those people who want to stick your head in the sand and just be blindly positive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, one, like one thing is a fact. If you're a playoff team, you're contending for MLS Cup, and we're one of those teams now. So, so overall, this is a good time to be a Galaxy fan, no matter how you look at it. Hopefully... Hopefully we're contending from third place. Hopefully contending from third place. And that's, that's this Sunday, October 9th is decision day. All the Eastern conference teams are playing at like 12 midday or something like that. Right. Our time Pacific time. And all of the Western conference teams are playing at the exact same time, October 9th at 2 PM. So we are, we are, we are at Houston on the road at 2 PM and all of the games are going to be decided at the exact same time so the galaxy at houston who just beat nashville on the road <laughs> uh two to one which is crazy um i don't want to say it on camera uh <laughs> but there's a big old f word there for houston and uh <laughs> i hope that i hope we can really take it to them at home against houston this is a team that has uh kind of boned us a couple seasons mm-hmm. now at the tail end of the season uh, and they've kind of played gatekeeper to us so it's going to be delicious we're already qualified all we have to do is beat them and the galaxy will go into the playoffs in a much better position so this is it guys final game of the season galaxy versus houston it is all or nothing right so um step aside nfl sunday october 9th is decision day decision day man i could not be more excited so like matt said earlier we can't tell you guys where to book your flights to (laughs) just if you have the funds just book a flight to every destination every possible destination and uh go for it but uh uh, i think that's it guys we're all good we're covered great so we'll see you guys next week and we appreciate the viewership from all of us here my amazing co-host Uh, Matt Granger, Casey Cagle, the Galaxy guys, we appreciate it. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. The Galaxy back in the playoffs, that's good news. Have a good one. Nos vemos.